Hi there, it's John Dark Arps here with a, another quick tutorial, a little quick tip here. Uh, it's all about using the unison function in your synthesizers and how you can mitigate the fact that when you use the unison function, um, even though your sounds end up being much more kind of wide and full and they deceptively sound much bigger in the mix, in actual fact, um, you'll find that in the end they aren't. And the reason that is is because of what the unison function on any synthesizer does, and I'm using my Axis Virus here as an example, but really this applies to any synth whatsoever. Um, and the function of the unison uh, button or function in any synthesizer is to simply duplicate the oscillator stage uh, and anything that is going on in the oscillator stage of your synthesizer is simply duplicated, uh, slightly detuned, and then panned um, left and right. Um, so as to give the impression of you having a nice big full sound. So I'm just going to turn the unison function of this synth patch off and we're going to listen to this little bass line I put down to a beat. This bass line is in fact a cover of the bass line from London Electricity's superstructure on the album Pull the Plug from 1999, one of my all-time favorites. You should definitely check that out. So um, this is the bass line without the unison function. <laughs> Okay, so maybe you might recognize that. So now let's listen to it with the unison function on. And I'll just put it to twin. In other words, it basically has one duplicate of the original uh, oscillator stage. So turn it on to twin and the detune function is turned up to a moderate amount and the pan spread function is turned up to a moderate amount as well. You may or may not have these functions on your synthesizer, but basically this is just ensuring that the oscillators themselves are in fact detuned and they are in fact spread across the stereo spectrum um, and the amount that you choose. Of course, if you were to put this down to zero, uh, then you would have theoretically Theoretically, you just get a louder signal still in mono. In fact, we should just check that out. Let's solo the virus patch, and let's have a listen to it. Unison is turned on with the twin function on, but detune and pan spread to zero. Now, I can hear a bit of sort of phase cancellation going on there already, and this is really the heart of the issue. It's a little strange, as theoretically, if you have the oscillator stage duplicated and there is absolutely zero detuning and absolutely zero spreading of that duplicated oscillator stage, then in theory, those waveforms should meet in phase and simply uh, boost each other. In other words, it should be just simply louder. That does not seem to be the case here, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on. However, let's just move on. Let's just put this back up to, you know, a realistic setting because the whole purpose of the unison function is to give your synths a nice, big, wide, full flavor. And it does this very well, but the problem is that can be very deceptive. But let's just turn it up. And now we can hear that the sound is much more wide in the stereo field. And I'll just bring the drums back in. So some might say that that sounds better. And in many situations, when you design a synth patch and you engage the unison function, it does indeed sound better. So the, the problem is in when it's time for mixing down, it's time to actually finish your track and finalize it. And the fact of the matter is, when you have a, a lot of sounds um, that are relying heavily on the unison function, um, you've got a problem because when you sum your mix to mono, the impact of those synthesizers that are using the unison function is lost and I find that the sound actually becomes quite hollow and there really is a very drastic difference between monitoring your main mix in mono as it is in stereo. Another observation I've made is that although it may sound great in your studio on your monitors, when your patches are relying very heavily on the unison function to sound great, you will often find that the mix just will not translate as well on other systems, and indeed certain sounds just get lost. I have this gain plugin on my output here in this little project, 
and I've simply engaged the mono function, and so I can turn it on or off. I can basically, for your purposes, just sum the, uh, the master output to mono or not, just at the click of a button. I would usually use the mono button on my monitor mixing desk. Anyway, so let's turn the gain, let's turn the gain plugin on, and now we are listening to our main mix sum to mono. So, so hopefully you can notice straight away that the sound of the bass synth is much more hollow now. It's not as present and upfront and in your face as it was before. So this is a pretty significant problem that I have been encountering throughout my productions and I've recently discovered a, a functional solution to the problem. And that solution is for any synth patch that is integral to the production. So certainly a bass line or any kind of lead synth melody, anything that really, really needs to stand out in the mix and always needs to be present. You need to have a mono version of that patch in the mix. And the most functional way to do that is to just bounce it to audio. So let's create a new audio channel. And I'm just gonna route the output to output one and two, create. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce this bass line and I'm going to, um, what I'm gonna do is in the synthesizer patch, I'm going to turn off the unison function. So let's just listen to this again. So now, this will sound exactly the same to us whether we um, are monitoring in mono or stereo. With one exception, actually. In this particular example, I have some reverb on this bass sound, and I um, that is actually creating a stereo image of this patch. And I noticed when I turned on the gain plugin on the master output that the stereo width of the sound uh, was reduced when I turned the mono summing on. In other words, the reverb does create some kind of artificial uh, stereo spreading. And in this situation, we want to have a completely dry, totally pure mono sound. So I've turned off the reverb and let's just listen again. This is with the gain plugin off. Let's turn it on. Sounds exactly the same. Okay, so this is good. It sounds exactly the same. So let's bounce this to audio. And I'm just gonna call this Clyrus Bass 10 Bounce. I have to do this bounce in real time as opposed to offline because this is one of the limitations of using the virus TI plugin. It cannot handle any offline bounces. Okay, we now have our mono patch. There it is. Let's engage the solo function, or in fact, let's disengage the solo function. And this channel is also routed to stereo out, as it should be. So now we go back to our virus patch and we simply re-engage Unison and put our reverb back as it was. So what we're attempting to do here is to recreate the feeling, the, the, the flavor, the timbre of the original very wide stereo patch by using the mono version of it as the backbone and the stereo widened version of it as a sweetening layer that is going to support the mono backbone. So with the virus based mono channel and the virus channel soloed, let's just listen to those together. And I'm gonna bring the virus channel, the original virus channel, which is now wide. I'm gonna bring that to nothing. So we just hear the mono. Now, as I bring up the virus channel, it supports the mono bass channel. So it's just there to give it a bit of a wider image. But when we engage the gain plug in here, which will sum our master output to mono, you'll find that the sound does not kind of disappear and become sort of hollow as it did before. 
See, so the sound is still present, it's still up front. Regardless of whether or not we have the mono sum plugin engaged on the master output, the bass line remains present and, you know, it's, it's, it's supporting the track as it should be. Let's just listen to it without. So I have unsoloed the mono track and now we'll hit play in stereo here. So this sounds fine, but when I engage the mono function on the master output, it becomes much more hollow. It's just kind of weak. And the reason it does this is because basically when the unison function uh, duplicates and spreads the oscillator stage across the two channels, your left and right, because they're slightly detuned, but otherwise exactly identical, when you sum those two channels, those left and right channels, to mono again, there's a phase cancellation problem as the, uh, as the waveforms are basically meeting each other uh, slightly out of phase and creating all sorts of phasing issues. That's why it's important to do this, and you can do this for any type of patch, not just the bass, but also any melodic patches, anything where you're using the unison spreading function. So I hope this has been of some use to you. If you've got any further questions, please leave them in the comments. Cheers.